Hey guys, what's up? So, before watching this particular video, I'll sincerely request you to watch all the videos before in this series. Otherwise, it will not make any sense whatsoever. But anyway, uh, it will still uh, benefit you a lot if you directly watch this also. So, this will be dealing with conservation of biodiversity. Till now, we have dealt with what is biodiversity, what are the different explanation or modes of biodiversity, how it needs to be saved, what are the different aspects which are to be needed and finally we have discussed what are the loss to humanity because of the loss of biodiversity and finally we discussed why it is essential to save biodiversity so finally we will know what are the modes to save biodiversity in this video this is obviously presented by me so if you have any still any problem any doubt or any query regarding all the previous videos you can please comment below the video on youtube or on the Facebook page rest assured you'll know that I am always watching these comments and trying to include all the changes in the next videos so this video will be more or less theoretical and there will be a lot of jargon so please bear with me but it is very very essential specifically for prelims examinations and try to focus on the keywords which are highlighted or which are bold this is the Facebook page so anyway we will deal with IUCN in this so first of all the full form of IUCN this is a very recent name before it was called with different names so it is not international union for conservation of nature the correct legal and complete name is international union for conservation of nature and natural resources so the headquarters are situated in Gland it's a place in Switzerland so if there was a joke when I used to prepare that if you don't know any headquarter just name it Switzerland so that goes still today starting from UN to all the major bodies most of them are located in Switzerland what is the objective the objective is to find pragmatic which are which is called as practical solutions to our most pressing environmental and developmental challenges so let's say you have carbon dioxide emissions so IUCN will try to do that let's say uh, your some species is going extinct so IUCN will try to cover for that so most of the environmental conventions IUCN plays as an advisory role so that's very important people think that only red data book is IUCN so IUCN is much 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 more than what is red data book it helps for nature's conservation as well as for sustainable use of natural resources so these are the two key aims of IUCN now what is the mission the mission of IUCN is to influence the decision making parties as well as to encourage and assist societies throughout the world finally to conserve the integrity as well as the diversity of nature see the role is very very vague so they have lots of discretion as to how they want to advise or how they want to go about when it comes to nature's conservation and finally they ensure that the natural resources are not exploited by capitalist countries with huge markets and capital rather there is an equitable sharing of those natural resources and finally this whatever extraction do occurs or whatever exploitation do occurs is ecologically sustainable they want something called a zero waste cycle in which there is no waste so the input is equals to output and finally output is equals to it input this is a perfect case scenario and finally it's world's oldest as well as largest global environmental network there are a lot of WWF and all which are offshoot of this IUCN so as I have already told so it is it helped in establishment of WWF so it is not World Wildlife Fund but it is World Wildlife Fund for nature and then we have World Conservation Monitoring System so they were established by IUCN and finally it also advises all the major environmental conventions which I have already told you so that's not a big deal guys so finally Anair Anderson she is the current IUCN Director General so now IUCN has something called as work program 2013 to 2016 in which there are three statements just read them once it is value and conserving nature equitable governance of nature's use and finally deploying nature based solution this is very very critical earlier solution were man based that man should not face any problem but now the solution which are being deployed are nature based so that is a very very critical change from anthropocentric thinking to finally natural centric thinking so that is extremely important finally uh, so guys bear with me as my throat is not that well 
सो एनी वे मूविंग फॉरवर्ड वी हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज आई यू सी एन रेड लिस्ट ऑफ थ्रेट एंड स्पीसीज मुझे पता है इसी के लिए वेट कर रहे थे इतनी देर से बट द आइडिया बिहेंड वॉज दैट इज आई यू सी एन इज मच मोर देन रेड लिस्ट इट इज ऑल्सो येलो लिस्ट इट इज ऑल्सो ग्रीन लिस्ट एंड इट इज ऑल्सो पर्पल लिस्ट एनी वे नो पन इंटेंडेड इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज रेड लिस्ट और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज रेड डेटा लिस्ट वाई इट इज कॉल्ड एज रेड डेटा यू जस्ट गो टू दर वेबसाइट रेड मीन्स इन जनरल अ साइन ऑफ डेंजर इन जनरल आई एम स्पीकिंग इट इज़ द वर्ल्ड्स मोस्ट कॉम्प्रहेंसिव इन्वेंट्री ऑफ ग्लोबल कंजर्वेशन स्टेटस ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल स्पीसीज दैट एब्सोल्यूटली अंडरस्टूड फाइनली इट्स एम इज टू कन्वे द अर्जेंसी ऑफ कंजर्वेशन इशूज टू द पब्लिक एंड पॉलिसी मेकरस सो जस्ट लाइक आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दे वॉन्ट टू इन्फ्लुएंस द डिसीजन मेकिंग पार्टीज सो दैट द इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी एंड दे ट्राई टू रिड्यूस स्पीसीज एक्सटेंशन दिस इज देयर की फोकस इन दिस रेड डेटा लिस्ट वाई डू दे वॉन्ट टू पब्लिश इट ईच एवरी ईयर फाइनली दीज आर द फोर मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव सो फाइनली इट प्रोवाइड साइंटिफिक इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन ऑल द डेटा रिलेटेड टू स्पीसीज वॉट एवर दे आर गोइंग टू एक्सटेंट और वॉट इज देर पॉपुलेशन वॉट इज देर हैबिटाट हाउ डू द रिप्रोड्यूस एक्सेप्ट्रा एक्सेप्ट्रा फाइनली दे वॉन्ट टू ड्रॉ अटेंशन how to draw attention by providing graphs and stats to the magnitude and importance of threatened biodiversity okay finally again i am telling you again and again the decision making parties at both national and international level who makes the policy iucn tries to lobby against them and finally it provides information so that we can help in conservation of biological diversity so these are the four broad objectives of iucn red data list so now this is a graph this is a very wonderful graph as you can see most of the threatened species are of amphibians which account for almost 30% of all threatened species this is a graph of 2007 a similar graph will be seen in case of critically endangered or endangered or vulnerable which three includes make threatened most of them again are mammals and amphibians so these are usually vertebrates So as you can see, most of the threatened species are vertebrates. These five make vertebrata, and then there are others. In this also, this was the data of 2007, but it is more or less applicable today also. The red one is the critically endangered one. This is threatened. And this is vulnerable. So all these together combine to make threatened. I'll tell you just right now. Don't worry. So the first list is extinct. it means there is no longer known individual remaining however extinct individuals do also reappear from time to time when after 50 years or 60 years koi sighting ho jati hai and then you know that this species is still living then the second is extinct in the wild it means there is no known person in the wild of that particular species however it is known to survive only in captivity captivity means like zoo or wildlife sanctuary or national park or biosphere reserve or even a herbarium so in this case it is called as extinct in the wild because the naturalized population is not found today outside its historical range they are found only outside its historical range not in them then comes the most important species the critically endangered one which is extremely high risk of extinction in the wild now see i know the criteria that there should be so many living individuals of a species itne kilometer square se common habitat hona chahiye all these criteria is given on wikipedia so you can just read it from them if you are interested otherwise i don't think it's that that important because anyway is preparation mein you need to remember lot of stuff so if i keep I'm, I'm bombarding you with information i don't think it will go well then we have endangered species who has extremely high risk of extinction see now this is called as keyword manipulation just because i said extremely high risk it has to mean it is critically endangered i have to say it says high risk of extinction again the objective criteria are there but mai chahta hu you don't read them otherwise it will be too long and too hectic for you then vulnerable is high risk of endangerment so extremely high risk of extinction is ce high risk of extinction is e and high risk of endangerment is vu and as i have already told you threatened means these three categories combined So, if any species is threatened, we don't know for sure which category it falls in. But in these three, C, E, and V, then we have something called as near threatened, which are likely to become endangered in the near future. Least concern is something like cows and mosquitoes. They have lowest risk and they have extremely widespread distribution. 
then we have data deficient in which case they can file in any category but there is not enough data to comment and finally there are not evaluated which means they have not been evaluated against the criteria so i have already told you there is a particular criteria for each and every category but i don't think it's advisable to go through all of them mostly they are number of individuals alive number of kilometer square of area in which individual is found their breeding potential and the threat and their habitat destruction these are the criteria over which you decide if it is worth it or not so in extinct case this is extinct this is a very good diagram this is extinct in the wild these are the threatened criteria as already told you this is that is not near threatened and this is finally least concern so these are the criteria in which any species can be found apart from data deficient and not evaluated so critically endangered fish in india just remember gange shark is critically endangered and there are two soft fish otherwise it's not important that much now moving forward to i just wanted to emphasize that any bush frog in india most of them are critically endangered some of them are sacred grove bush frog or munnar bush frog do you know where munnar is you must have heard gulf of munnar it is between tamil nadu and sri lanka so finally moving forward we have critically endangered reptiles the most important species is ghadial its snout is long and male has something called as a pit at the end of the snout something like that this is the body of a ghadial so because since there this snout is there and it has pit it looks like a ghada and ghada in hindi means matka matka uh, means something called as a collection for water it's a instrument which is used specially in north india so that is why it is called as ghadial and finally we have some sea turtle like leatherback sea turtle which is also important and finally the red crowned roof turtles so these are the critically endangered reptiles in india there is lot of more of them but these are the important ones then birds extremely important white bellied heron it is found in bangladesh bhutan plus the west bengal and that region and uh, great indian bustard obviously it's found in rajasthan plus gujarat plus pakistan that is basically in the thar desert region then we have siberian crane then we have white drumed vulture then other important are bengal florican and uh, indian vulture and finally this sociable lopping just remember these two are till now they are classified as critically endangered but recent data suggests that himalayan quail and pink headed duck are extinct there is no known individual sighting for long time so this is a great indian bustard and this is a white bellied heron as you can see its belly is white and great indian bustard is one of the heaviest flying bird anyway moving forward to mammals we have somatran rhinoceros we have pygmy hog and we have jaiwan rhinoceros so these are almost going to extinct in india in some time then we have malabar is always associated with kerala that is area of kannur plus the above area of kasargod etc the northern kerala then we have himalayan wolf jenkins and nicobar shrew and nam dafa flying squirrel so these are the critically endangered mammals in india please try to remember as much as you can then we have some concept called as edge species so those species who are re relatively very very few uh, species in their own genus or in their own family so they are evolutionarily distinct and they are globally endangered so if they fulfill these two criteria they are called as edge species and they represent a disproportionate amount of unique this is the keyword no other species like them evolutionary history example in case of elephants you will not find much relatives which are close to elephants same goes with pandas so something to save these species there is called as existence program for edge or edge of extinct existence program the edge already have defined so basically it deals with the current status of identifying them and finally knowing whether they are poorly known or endangered or vulnerable etc and finally they develop and implement conservation measures for all edge species which are already not currently protected 
एंड फाइनली लोकल साइंटिस्ट दे रिसर्च एंड दे कंजर्व एज स्पीसीज वर्ल्ड वाइड सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज एज ऑफ एक्सटेंशन प्रोग्राम सो आई जस्ट टेल यू वॉट इज एज सो लेट से दिस इज एन इवोल्यूशनरी ट्री राइट सो इन दिस केस दीज फोर विल बी रिलेटेड सो दे हैव लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स ऑफ रिलेटिव इन दैम कैन यू सी दिस रेड लिंक देर इज नो रिलेटिव टू दिस स्पीसीज सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज एज स्पीसीज बिकॉज दिस इज इवोल्यूशनरी डिस्ट्रिंक प्लस इट इज ग्लोबली एंडेंजर्ड सो वेरी वेरी की इंपॉर्टेंट सेम गोज विद दीज दे डोंट हैव मच रिलेटिव बिकॉज दे आर इवोल्यूशनरी डिस्ट्रिंक दे आर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट ब्रांचेस सो दैट्स वाई दे आर कॉल्ड एज एज एंड इट्स बिकम्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू कंजर्व दैम देन वी हैव द वाइल्ड लाइफ कंजर्वेशन सो बेसिकली छोटे में बताऊँ तो इट इज बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व प्लस नेशनल पार्क प्लस वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी दिस इज कॉल्ड एज इन सी टू कंजर्वेशन एट दैट इज एट द प्लेस देन वी हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज एक्स सी टू कंजर्वेशन यू कैन सो दिस यू कैन ऑल्सो सेक्रेट ग्रोव्स इन इट सो बेसिकली वाइल्ड लाइफ कंजर्वेशन इज प्रैक्टिस ऑफ प्रोटेक्टिंग एंडेंजर्ड प्लांट एंड वाइल्ड एनिमल्स एंड देर हैबिटार्ट वेरी वेरी सिंपल डेफिनेशन बट द सिंपल डेफिनेशन इज द मोस्ट पावरफुल वन वाई द नीड अरोज बिकॉज ऑफ नेगेटिव एंथ्रोपोजेनिक इफेक्ट और नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स ऑन वाइल्ड लाइफ देन देर आर थ्री आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ इट दैट इज हैबिटार्ट डिस्ट्रक्शन दैट इज एब्सोल्यूट डिस्ट्रक्शन फ्रेगमेंटेशन मीन्स द साइज बींग रिड्यूज एंड डिग्रेडेशन मीन्स द क्वालिटी बींग रिड्यूज दैट इज दे आर बींग रिप्लेसड बाय समथिंग एल्स द की फीचर ऑफ डब्ल्यू सी इज टू एंश्योर दैट द नेचर रिमेन्स फॉर द फ्यूचर जनरेशन एज वेल एंड फाइनली दे रिकॉगनाइज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ एज वेल एज विल्डरनेस लैंड्स टू ह्यूमन बींग्स मूविंग फॉरवर्ड सो देर इज बेसिकली फर्स्ट इज द इन सी टू कंजर्वेशन सो जो डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज होती है ना उनमें प्रॉब्लम आती है इन सी टू कंजर्वेशन में सिंस देर इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट ट्रेड ऑफ बिटवीन डेवलपमेंट एंड कंजर्वेशन मोस्ट ऑफ द डेवलपिंग नेशन ऑब्वियसली यार इकोनॉमिक्स टू बूस्ट अप इकोनॉमिक दे हैव टू बर्न कोल दे हैव टू प्रोड्यूस लॉट्स ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सो मोस्ट ऑफ द डेवलपिंग नेशन फाइंड इज एक्सट्रीमली अनरियलिस्टिक एज वेल एज अन इकोनॉमिकल दैट इज नॉन वायबल टू कंजर्व ऑल देयर बायोलॉजिकल वेल्थ ओके सो बिकॉज नंबर ऑफ स्पीसीज टू बी सेव्ड इज फार 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 मोर देन कंजर्वेशन रिसोर्स विच आर अवेलेबल ओके दैट्स ऑल्सो ट्रू सो दे विल फाइंड इट इकोनॉमिकली अनवायबल गुड पॉइंट सो वॉट दे डू इज दे डू कंजर्वेशन इन देयर नेचुरल हैबिटॉट एंड सम ऑफ इट so that is called as in situ that is at place of birth so you don't transplant them to another place example in project tiger we have 41 wildlife sanctuaries where we do in situ conservation and the examples will include of national park wildlife sanctuary biosphere reserves some sacred groves also so moving forward uh, we have some concept called as hot spots so as i have already explained before so i'll explain it again so hot spots basically there are three criterias high degree of species endemism plus high degree of species diversity plus some threat external threat to species so they just cover less than 2% of the earth's land area but they have huge biodiversity covering around 8 to 10% of the even more of the world species and these are the endemic species means those species which are confined to that region like golden tailed macaque is confined to western ghats and they are not found anywhere else so the two hot spots in india include western ghats and sri lanka and indo burma and himalaya so these are the two hot spots in india so most of the countries high biodiversity regions are here and there is an estimate that strict protection of just these two hot spots can reduce the ongoing mass extinction of the species by almost 30% so can you imagine if you just protect these two regions that is why there are so many committees on western ghats and all so finally now india has the 18 biosphere reserves please don't go by any other data this is the recent data we have 112 national parks the sanction strength is 160 and we have approximately 511 wildlife sanctuaries but uh, in general they are called as more than 500 wildlife sanctuaries so if i next video if you want me to make so what i'll do is i'll describe what is biosphere reserve i'll describe which biosphere reserve we need to remember then what are the national parks how to remember most of them which animal they are famous for where they are located what is their utility what is the difference between biosphere reserve national park and wildlife sanctuary then what is sacred groves all these concepts will be dealt with the next video so do let me know how do you like it so guys uh, thanks for watching the video this is the youtube channel an academy and you can also tweet your problem at here 
यू कैन जस्ट कॉमेंट इन द यूट्यूब सेक्शन और एट द फेसबुक पेज एंड डू स्प्रेड द वर्ड दिस हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट स्पेशली फॉर दोज हु कैन नॉट अफोर्ड कोचिंग एंड थैंक यू वॉचिंग द वीडियो एन ऑसम डे